day five begins here in Loch Carron. It's quite a view now, it wasn't two hours ago. And loads and loads of low cloud cover, fog. And this morning's run ideally is going to take us over what they call the Bialknabar, passing the cattle to Applecross. Where the conditions are wrong, it's really, really horrible. So this morning would have been a rubbish day to go over the Bialknabar. So we've just sat and waited at our B&B &B and the weather forecast has come through. The two hour wait's been worthwhile, it looks like it's clearing and I think this is the sort of day where we can have a go at the Bialknabar, the pass of the cattle, get ourselves over to Applecross, run around the coast up to Shieldig. Hell's is just getting ready. Feast drums ready to go. So, let's go. Go, go, go. The pass of the cattle is busier than ever these days as it's on the North Coast 500 route around Northern Scotland. This is a Wednesday morning in May. So imagine what it must be like on a weekend day in August. This was a popular biking road long before the NC500 was even created back in 2015. But now you get motorhomes and campers, as well as loads of bikes and cyclists too. The views from here over Kishorn Port, where an oil rig is in for service and a paint job, are pretty amazing. So it's not hard to see the appeal. But large vehicles aren't supposed to drive over this road. Yeah, they still do. And getting some space to yourself is definitely difficult. This day was probably busier than normal as I'm sure lots of people did the same as us and waited for the weather to clear before tackling it. Helen wanted a quick snap at the first photo point but she wasn't quick enough. This gaggle of riders had the same idea and didn't seem concerned at all about Helen's photo or even her chances of getting her Hornet past their bikes and out of the lay-by. This was one of the more inconsiderate things I'd ever seen motorcyclists do to a fellow biker and Helen's words for these guys were just a little less considered than that. Now this is a V-Strom 800DE and this is the Bialknabar, the pass of the cattle. And today it feels very ironic that a road that was named after a load of sheep is covered in a load of sheep. Of which I have to admit I'm one of them. Uh, because this has just become a pilgrimage really, part of the North Coast 500. And there's all sorts of people just trogging over it. There's motorhomes, there's campers, even though apparently there's signs saying no motorhomes, no campers. There's people on classics who look like they struggle to get up the hill near my house, but they've decided they're going over the, the up the bar, the pass of the cattle. But look at the view, look at the view. Just stopped for a quick look at what's going on. So this house looks like she's ready to go. Let's get moving. Best for the rest of the pass of the cattle, which is that way. The Applecross Pass is supposedly the steepest single track road in the UK and it can be quite a challenge. I've heard all sorts of stories from the locals about what happens when people try and come over this road in bad weather. Apparently the local breakdown wagon gets plenty of business recovering stuck vehicles and dropped bikes. It was worth the wait this morning for us though as this road is definitely something to do before you hand in your bike licence. This was my third run over this pass in 12 years but even now I still get a kick out of it. It seems Helen was getting a bit giddy about riding it too as we've tried to work out why she did this little bit of rhythmic horn blowing but she can't remember at all. Maybe it was just the euphoria of getting to ride over the Bialk Nabar. It didn't take long before we reached the peak of the pass and the views opened out over the inner sound and down to the Applecross Inn. This pass was fun, but to my mind, the best bit of today's ride was coming next. 
The bit you always hear about is the Bialt Navar, but my favourite thing about going to Applecross is this road north from the Applecross Inn. It follows the Inner Sound and Loch Torridon, and it's one of the most dramatic places I've ever ridden a bike. Craggy rocks, small locks and large pools of water line the ride around the Applecross Peninsula. It's not a place for riding hard, but the going is far easier than the run over the Bialk Navar. The views don't quite match the occasional vistas that you get up on the Bialk, but you get more time to take them in. As you head north, stopping in the laybys lets you gaze out across the inner sound to the Isles of Rase and behind it, Sky. I can only imagine what it's like to live in a remote part of the country like this. This is my third time along this road and the weather has always been beautiful, so I'm really lucky. It'd probably be very different on a windswept rainy day. But today, I can't think of anywhere I'd rather be riding than the Applecross Peninsula to shield it. Freshly stocked up on treats from Nanny's Cafe, Helen is ready to fulfil a promise. This trip has been two years in the making. After losing her dad to Covid, she threw herself into getting her full bike licence. She was inspired by the thought of riding to Scotland, where her family came together for their holidays in memory of her dad. As a kid, she and her dad would battle to see who could paddle the furthest out to sea. This one's for you, Ted. Leaving Shieldig and heading along the shore of Loch Torridon, it started to feel like a North Coast 500 procession again. The route was created to bring tourism to Northern Scotland. It's done that, and then some. Cyclists, motorhomes and bikers, we all head here in our droves now. This guy's luggage looked a bit perilously perched on the back, so I thought I'd best warn him. We saw him again further up the road at a petrol station and he gave us a thumbs up with his bag looking much straighter on the back of his bike. There is a good sense of camaraderie amongst riders on this road. Not all of the people who live and work in these parts are completely in love with the North Coast 500 though. Some people in slow moving vehicles seem oblivious to the way to drive on single track roads. The idea is that you stop either in a passing place on your side of the road or alongside one on the other side of the road to let oncoming traffic through and to let faster vehicles come past from behind. Benny Ma here didn't seem to get the idea though. It's not as if we wanted to tear off up the road with our asses on fire, but if we wanted to go at the pace of a motorhome, we'd have driven up here in one. Locals who do know how to use single track roads are getting pretty fed up of living on a tourist trail as they spend more time than ever trying to get from A to B. There are other controversies around the NC500 too. Some people assume you can stop and sleep wherever you like in Scotland because wild camping is legal. Truth is, that doesn't apply to anyone using motorised transport. There are issues with people leaving their litter and uh, waste behind them as they pitch up in the laybys as well. In some ways, the North Coast 500 has been a victim of its own success. After 13 passing places, Benny finally pulled in and let us go past and carry on our way towards Kinloch U. Here we decide whether we had time to cut west and stay on the NC500 route for a bit longer or whether we needed to head east to make tonight's destination at Nairn a more reasonable time. I knew which one I wanted to take and I suspected Helen would feel the same way. Thankfully, when it came down to it, we went west, not east. It was only an extra hour and a half of riding and that riding was beautiful. I have ridden this way in the rain before and it's so much more enjoyable on a day like this. As we passed Little Lock Broom and approached the end of the A832, it was time to leave the NC500 pilgrims behind. Part of me was glad, but another part knew what great roads and views those pilgrims had ahead of them. Still, for us, it was the A835 West and the Keswick Bridge to Inverness, and on to our night's stop in Nair. Bit of a late start, bit of a late finish, but we've arrived at the Albert Inn. Very nice room here in 
Nairn. Today we started late, but then we got over the Apple Cross Pass, didn't we? About, yeah. About the bar. And a really, really cool run up the coast. And then turned off to come over here towards Nairn. Yeah. Did you, in, you enjoy it? Yeah, I really enjoyed it. And then the run up around the coast, that's one of my favourite bits. Yeah. Uh, run up around the coast. That's just spectacular. You kind of go around another headland and and then you cut across a bit of land and then there's another set of mountains and then another bit of coast. And yeah. Just, just brilliant. The weather's been absolutely cracking. Yeah, today was pretty epic in terms of weather, wasn't it? After yesterday's, yeah. this weather has been a, a lot better today. A bit windy in places, but yeah. it's just been sunny all day. It's windy just... means no bugs. It means no bugs, no midges. And then I'll run up to Shieldig and Nanny's Calf. Nanny's Calf. Nanny's Calf. Good recommendation. Yeah, and then up through to Kinlock U. Fueled up at Kinlock U. What are you getting? Something like 750 miles per gallon or something? <laughs> From the Hornet? Is that right? When we went to fill up, it literally just ticked over onto reserve tank and I'd done 178 miles. Yeah. And I was getting a mere 62 miles per gallon from the least strong, which is not too shabby. This it's whole trip time. has been peppered just by food. We're going for Italian again, I think. Right, we're going for food. See you in a bit. Day six. Day six, wow, it's nearly a week. And you join us in Nairn, same place we were last night, funnily enough. And the bikes are exactly where they were last night, which is a big relief. Chained up, all good, still here. The riding yesterday was good, wasn't it? Yeah, it was amazing. But tiring. Today should be a relatively easy run. We're going down the old military road through the Spitle of Glen Sheets, through the Cairngorms, down to Perth. It says it's only going to be a three hour run. Yeah. Get ready to go? Yeah. Time to go? Yeah. Go, go, go. <laughs> go, go, go. If parts of yesterday's ride felt like a procession, then it was a different story today. The procession was now on the nearby A9, trogging up to or back from Inverness and the North Coast 500. Here on the A939 and A93 from Nairn to Perth, we were on one of Britain's most famous driving and riding roads. It's most commonly known as the Old Military Road, and it's 125 miles or so of proper riding. Here on the most northerly section, we're just getting started. This was one of our shorter days on the bikes and we had time for Helen to stop and put up her drone. The views from the bikes are great, but looking around from the drone's viewpoint is like looking out from the top of a 30-storey building. It's beautiful. The first part of the run from Nairn is fun, but it's at Granton on Spey that things really start to step up. Take the left off the high street, head over the new Spey Bridge, which at a mere 93 years old is considerably younger than the old Spey Bridge that was built in the 1750s, and then it's a right turn back onto the old military road. The number of sports cars, convertibles and fellow bikes tells its own story about this route. This one is for the enthusiasts, the people who want to experience their bike. Like the Applecross Pass we rode yesterday, coming this way in bad weather is not a good idea. It's reported to be one of the first roads in Britain that gets closed to traffic when the weather turns rotten. I've only ridden this road once before and that was my own bad decision. I was heading north and trusting the sat-nav reckoned I could make it to Granton on Spey before nightfall. I was wrong and riding this road in the dead of night was one of the spookiest experiences of my life. I could see the reflections of the wildlife's eyes in the headlights of the BMW K1600 GT I was riding. As my average speed reduced, my ETA got further and further away. I eventually reached Granton at 11pm, by which time the only thing left in the only chippy still open was battered rib meat. If the folks at I'm a Celebrity want something to really repulse their contestants, then I can heartily recommend battered rib meat. Anyway, I digress. Today the sun is shining, the roads are dry and I can see the wildlife much more easily. 
I've always regretted that night ride through here and today was my chance to experience the old military road properly. We headed deeper into the Cairngorm Mountains past ski centres and on some exciting descents on our way towards Braemar. What a cracker of a road. Well, we're about halfway through day six. And it's just crossed my mind. I've had this bike now for a week. A week with the V-Strom 800DE. So 1,400 miles in a week. And feels like my bike now. Uh, I can already tell that it's going to be quite difficult. I have to give this back when I eventually do. It just feels really natural, really easy to ride. It's really, on a trip like this, totally completely spacious, loads of room, loads of leg room, easy and flexible to ride, uh, plenty of carrying space for the bits that I need for a week away. Just bang the preload up a bit and it raised that, it handles really easily. Some of the roads have been quite challenging but it's been absolutely brilliant. So week in and hopefully there's loads more good times to come. Anyway, got the afternoon of riding to do down to Perth while we survey the river that runs through Charlie's Balmoral Estate. Swallowing the bitter disappointment at missing out on an overpriced scone at Balmoral Palace, we continued south on the old military road, enjoying an afternoon ride that's up there with the best of them. There's always a risk when sheep are about, but at least this time there was enough daylight to see whether the woolly ones were going to spring to their feet and under our wheels. Stay where you are, Sean. The old military road guided us through Scotland's biggest skiing area at the Spittal of Glenshee before spitting us out at Blair Gowrie, which is famous for its raspberries. From here, it was a short but busy stretch of road to Perth and our hotel for the night. Day six done, and I think we've managed to book a hotel on possibly the busiest street in southern Scotland. Uh, Grampian Hotel in Perth, really busy, so try and keep this short. A bit like today, it's quite short, wasn't it? 125 yeah. miles today. Is that one? Yeah, I thought it was 150. But the old military road, what a belter that was. I loved it. What did you think? Yeah, I thought it was, it was really good. The, there was a bit near the end where we dropped down and we just felt like we were coming down, 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 down. And then it was like twisty, 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 twisty. Really lovely. Yeah. It's been kind of higher, higher average speed, I would say. Faster roads than the roads we've been on before. Um, we've arrived nice and early. Yeah, but today's been really good. If you're ever going to do the North Coast 500, absolutely great thing to do. But if you're ever going up there to do it and you've got the time or you can find the time, do the old military road on the way up. Come across to Perth and then go up to Nairn on that road before coming across to Inverness. Because what a shame to scoot past that and then do the North Coast, just do the North Coast 500 and then come past on the A9, which is a hell. It's, as roads go, it's hell. 50 mile an hour average speed cameras, it's just mm. tedium. Whereas that road is just brilliant. That's day six done. Day six of eight. Yeah. Two to go. Two to go. It's probably more like one and a half really, but yeah, depends two what to go. In the last one, it? So tomorrow it's from here to Bishop Auckland. But in the meantime, time for some food and some rest. Yeah.